I was asked to um, show a Photoshop painting and they wanted it to be a method that's just the easiest way possible, which is going to be to run a filter, but not a necessarily a uh, Photoshop like. You can do um, filter stylize and oil paint, but it's um, you can tell that it's been done that way. So one way that you can in um, Photoshop is with the mixer brush. The mixer brushes are fabulous. Um, I can do a whole series on that, but right now I just want to show you um, a way to create a painting. This is a, fa a photo that I took from 2014. I was playing outside with my niece, and it's obvious that there was a a direct flash which is not good it's very flat but that can always be fixed when you're <clears throat> painting it but like I said this has been some time I have a um, I don't use these but I used to everything I paint now is basically by hand because it's become so quick and easy and and if you start out this way then you can eventually get to where you understand the whole process and um, do it all by hand quickly but I'm going to show I have a um, it's, it's by Exposure Software, and it's called Snap Art. It's not that expensive. I've had it forever, so I think when I got it, it was $35. I don't know how much it is now. But I will open that up, and it has all kinds of different effects. Um, colored pencil, comics, crayon, impasto, oil paint, pastel, oil, as you can see. If you, depending on what the look you want, I'm going to go to oil paint. And then I'm going to do detailed because um, you can see under detail, um, excuse me, under oil paint, there's all these different choices. Thick paint, um, that's pretty cool, but I don't like um, the, uh, what, how can I say, it? The, the texture effect because once I have this, if I have to make corrections on it, I, um, you lose the depth. So basically, I only use this if it's done. But this would be, if you wanted to use a thick paint, um, this would be a good one to bring into a layer. And you can, actually we might do it. Let's see, detailed. No. We're going to go with thick paint. I want to show you a procedure that this would work with. Um, you can change the brush size. And you, it, when you change it, you'll see it changes it. That's big brushes. That's teeny tiny brushes. But I'm going to leave it about right there. Maybe I'll down there about 30. Um, the photorealism, if you want it to be really close to photorealism. Now, so what I'm going to do is a little trick to show you. I'm going to do one that is not very photorealistic on one layer. I'm going to leave the paint thickness and everything the same. Now the only thing I like, I do like to change is I like to go down here where it says texture and I say none. I take any canvas lines off of it. I can add that kind of texture later. I do not want that to show up because if I make a correction and it doesn't copy the canvas, then it, you can tell um, what was what happened. Okay, so we're going to apply this. And it applies it on its own layer. Now what we're going to do is cut that layer off. And we're going to do this again. Filter. But we're not going don't do filter snap art up here. Open snap art up again. Do the exact same except for under photorealism. Bring it up to where you could be happy with the face. You can change the brush size to bring it down because that's going to make it a little bit more photorealistic. Make sure that there's no... Um, Pre, the preset is on, uh, no, wait, yeah, the texture, the texture is on that. So, okay, so then say apply. So now you have a really thick one, a really thick paint one, and then a more photorealistic one. And either one of them can go on top, but I'm going to show you what I would do. I would cut that one back on, make a mask, a layer mask. Bring in your brush tool. Bring her face back in. Now 
and you can do it this is why I don't like thick paint because you can see and yeah a lot of people do like to see the depth but I also paint wet paint and I know that that's unrealistic to, so it kind of bugs me um, some people like that but then what you can do is bring back in anything that you need to her arm you know like the her fingers maybe and anything else that you think looks wrong now this is definitely a more a thicker I, w I don't like this so much on the person on a portrait but I was just going to show you so okay so that would be a super quick way that you could turn a painting but that's you know you're not doing it by hand so what I'm going to do is get rid of both of these that was one way let's look and see what it looks like if we do it as a detailed filter exposure snap art go under the detailed where it's less as you can see but you see the texture is the canvas if you like that you can leave it but what I do is if I want it to have a canvas texture I actually add a canvas texture to its own layer um, rather than it be within the painting itself because I cannot make any paint marks on this without losing that unless I change my brush and that's a whole other class so I'm going to tell that to be transparent so we're taking it all away um, and then we're going to tell the brush size a little bit smaller because I'm going to go with the photorealistic one here and we're going to make it as photorealistic as we can without losing so we'll say apply and then the next layer we'll do not very photorealistic Again, I'm going to go to the detailed now, and I am going to tell it no texture. I'm going to make the brush size, no, I like the lot smaller brush size mainly because I'm, I'm looking at the background right now. That looks better. And then photorealism is not going to be very much, and I'm going to apply it. So there's that and then at this point you can add your layer mask bring back in her face now I'm bringing it back in at a hundred percent you can bring it back in at less or you can change the you can change it up here on your brush up here or you can change it right here and say well that's too much you know I'm going to take it down Oh, I'm on the wrong. Oh, yeah, it's backwards. Okay, so anyway. Whoops. Bring back in, you know, if you want to bring back in the edges of the arm. Or if you have skin and you don't want it to be that textured. Let me show you. I don't think it looks too bad, but what I would do is I could change it down to like 50%. And that way it still leaves, but it doesn't uh, change it that much. And I have to put that hair back out. There we go. Uh, so this would be a one quick way to do it. And I, when I do my digital paintings, and you'll, you can see them online, I don't do them with these presets um, or the filters. I used to, when I first started out using them, and but now what I mainly do is paint them all by hand and I use either Photoshop or Corel Painter depending on what I'm painting and what the look is I'm going for um, my preference of course is going to be Corel Painter uh, just because of, it has so many more options um, this one Photoshop is great but you're not actually painting you're using a mixer brush which is I mean there's plus and minus to it but it, it looks um, very good and I do probably a good 30% in Photoshop now and I used to not use them at all but once they perfected their mixer brush it was wonderful because I used to paint with a smudge tool 
So there's that, and that's one example. So I'm going to stop this here. This is just to let you all see this. Um, I'm going to be adding more painterly types and how to do them videos because I have so many, I have a backlog of emails right now and people trying to figure out how to get um, painting in their programs. So hopefully this one will help you.